and as individuals. And as we prepare ourselves for worship, we take a moment to uplift that identity which brings us all here together today, that of being siblings in Christ. And so in that spirit, we light our Christ candle. The spirit is being uplifted as we speak. <laughs> we celebrate God in our midst as loving parent, devoted son, and imminent spirit. A relationship ever sure and ever new. And we light our other candles as candles of care. Remembering those in our families, in our congregations, in our communities, and around the world who are especially on our hearts at this time. And friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Take a moment, give a wave and a peace sign, however you want to greet one another this morning.
And in these next parts of this letter, we hear about how we are called to act towards one another as children of God, as sheep in the flock. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from God whatever we ask, because we obey God's commandments, and do what pleases God. And this is God's commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. For our song today, for Good Shepherd Sunday, you can make an educated guess as to which psalm we're going to be <laughs> looking at. It's Psalm 23, that eternal psalm of comfort and joy. And we're going to be singing it, as Psalm 23 should always be looked at. So you can follow along on the screen or in Voices United number 747. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. 
I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. We continue with our next hymn, which is found in More Voices, number 154, Deep in Our Heart. <coughs> Enough 
to sneak into the print shop through the back door that opened onto the paddock. Now, I was in the print shop at the time, and me and the visitors had quite a shock uh, seeing the sheep standing right beside the printing press there. And it resulted in me spending the whole afternoon picking up and sorting all of those tiny little lead letters that went onto the printing press. And by the way, did you know that the terms uppercase and lowercase come from the print shop because all the capital letters were on the uppercases and all of the small letters were on the lowercases? There you go, here's your lesson for the day. So normally on Good Shepherd Sunday, we focus on the role of Christ as the Good Shepherd. But given my previous run-ins with some bad or bad sheep, uh -huh, perhaps today we are called to reflect on what it means to be a good sheep. What it means to be a part of this flock that we know as Christ's body. Being called a sheep can be a bit of a uh, politically volatile word these days, as we've all seen, but to be called one of God's sheep, in the context we're discussing today, doesn't have to do with conformity or a lack of thinking. In fact, as our scripture readings show, to be a good sheep for the shepherd Christ has a lot more to do with how we live out love. One of the most critical aspects of being a good sheep is the ability to know the voice of the shepherd. We hear Jesus, they will know my voice. Now, the sheep at the Pioneer Village knew my voice because I was using them calling them names that I really shouldn't be saying at a pulpit on a Sunday. <laughs> but to know the voice of the shepherd is to take heed of the voice that we have embraced in the ministry, in the death, and the resurrection of Christ. The voice that we have heard all throughout this Lent and Easter season. The voice that challenged, comforted, nurtured, questioned, and encouraged, responded called out, and called in. To know the voice of the shepherd sounds simple enough, but in times of change or difficulty, the voice may be a little bit harder to hear. We may be tempted to latch on to the loudest or most prevalent voice at the moment, not realizing that it could be the higher hand leading us astray. This is where the work of prayer and discernment comes in. Seeking out the shepherd's voice, not just in the craziest times of life, but all throughout our days and our decisions. <coughs> all those little actions and little decisions about, am I listening to the voice? Am I listening to hear how I can live out God's love? If we hear the voice encouraging love, care, and compassion for one another, that's probably the shepherd's voice you're hearing. In essence, a good sheep practices hearing the shepherd's voice, practices the presence of God. This is a notion that has been central throughout the entire life of the church. I always like this one famous example from the great flock of the past couple thousand years. There was a monk named Brother Lawrence. He was a soldier and then decided to quit that and become a monk. He lived in France in the 1600s. And he became famous for what's called practicing the presence of God. His insistence on constant presence and communication with God extended into the most simple and boring tasks, assuring him that he knew the shepherd's voice. This is explained further by Harold Myra in his devotional based on Brother Lawrence's writing. So Myra wrote, writes, quote, All of our pauses present opportunities. Before a day's work as the cook in the monastery, Brother Lawrence would pray, and say, oh my God, since you are with me and I have to do my duties, grant me your grace to stay in your presence. Help me in my labors, possess all my affections. And as he worked, he kept talking to God. When he was busiest, he would use intervals of calm to ask for God's grace. No matter what was happening, Brother Lawrence sensed his maker's love. Now, a good sheep goes just beyond knowing the voice of the shepherd. It also involves knowing the rest of the flock as well. Jesus says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. To know Jesus is to know all of those whom Jesus loves and cares for and invites into his body. Sheep by nature are not solitary animals. They're meant to be together. And as anyone who has ever worked with animals know, they each have their own personalities and their own needs. 
and their own mischief making. For us as sheep today, the call is not just to know the flock that we find in these walls every Sunday morning, but to actively seek out where the shepherd may be present with others outside of these walls. Another example from the flock, this time a more recent example, comes from Alan Roxborough. He's the founder of the Missional Network. This is a uh, church movement that focuses almost exclusively on where God is in the community. We know how to worship God here, we know the presence of God in our congregation here, but how do we know where God is and what God is doing out there? So this is what Roxburgh writes. At first glance, the notion of joining with the God who is ahead of us in the neighborhood seems pretty straightforward. In fact, there is some actual reorientation involved. It means life with Jesus isn't primarily a private affair or even a church-centered affair. It means we are committed to actively transforming our communities. It calls us away from church questions and toward a whole set of disruptive questions about what God is up to and how we can join. And also, as Roxburgh alludes to, the final aspect of being a good sheep is to, excuse me, is to not know the loving shepherd and the sheep around. That's not me. There is a third point there. <laughs> okay, so the third. <laughs> He's like, I get so worked up about the sheep, I just completely lose my train of thought. So we know the voice of the shepherd, we know the flock around us, and then the third point, there, there's a natural progression here. The third point is to live out love, just like we hear in the letter to John. To actively love and serve in the same committed ways as the shepherd. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Through the care and guidance of the shepherd, we come to understand the call to love through the lens of self-giving. There's no other way to truly know what love is. To lay down our lives for our fellowship is to lay down the things in life that create inequalities and hatred, that make us think that we are better than or worse than one another. As the letter proclaims, the trappings of wealth and the call to share go right to the heart of laying down our lives for one another. Now this idea of laying down our lives and laying down the things that create inequalities, this has been a source of challenge and of opportunity for Christ sheep over countless generations. I'll give one more example. In her book, A People's History of Christianity, the famous historian and writer Diana Butler Bass talks about the early 5th century bishop John Chrysostom, or John Goldenmouth, as he was known back in the day. He spent much of his preaching life calling for the kind of love and care that the shepherd gave to us. So Diana Butler Bass writes, quote, One of John's chief concerns was the corrupting power of wealth. The desire to rule, he proclaimed, is the mother of all heresies. Chrysostom championed the church's social responsibility towards the poor the practice of hospitality, and the need for Christians to live in simplicity. His words still echo through time, ringing with Christian conviction regarding love for the neighbor. Speaking of the poor, John once reminded his comfortable parishioners, they are the healers of your wounds. The hands are medicinal to you. You receive more than you give. You are benefited more than you benefit. You give to God not to people. So we have just these few examples from all throughout the flock of Christ over the centuries. We have these examples of listening for the shepherd's voice, of knowing the sheep around us, and about laying down our lives for our fellow sheep. Now, it's, given all of this, being a sheep kind of sounds like a pretty tall order. We thought that we would just be out in the paddock and maybe getting up to a bit of mischief every now and again. But we don't have to figure out how to be a good sheep all by ourselves, or be sheepish about being a part of God's flock. Our whole lives of faith are guided and nurtured in Jesus, 
the one who shows us how to love and care and be with our neighbors. This relationship, or relation sheep, between the good shepherd and the sheep, <laughs> is one of wondrous love made known in community and in each of our own connections with God. So may we dedicate this day and all days to being good sheep and stay out of the print shop. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen. If you didn't hear anything else, you know about uppercase and lowercase now. That's a great, that's for parties. That's a great opening. Anyway. In recognizing our need for a shepherd and the kind of shepherd that we find in Christ, we turn to Christ once again in need of renewal. And so in that spirit, I ask you to join with me in our prayer of confession and renewal. Gracious God, we recognize that at times we don't follow the voice of the shepherd, instead listening to voices of hatred and grief. Sometimes we stray from the flock, and other times we create barriers to letting others in. We pray that we be shepherded to have more love and truth in our words and actions. For these and other transgressions, have mercy upon us and renew us. Friends, take comfort in the words once again from the Gospel of John. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. In Christ, we know God's love and compassion and care, and are renewed and guided in His love. Know God's forgiveness and offer likewise unto us. We continue with our next hymn found in Voices United, number 273, The King of Love, verses 1, 2, 4, and 6. <laughs>
First off, a thank you to all of those who participated in our uh, photo directory. Uh, we had sessions all Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm glad to say that all of the sessions were filled, so it's wonderful to see so many people out for that. Um, and especially a big thank you to Betty for organizing it. She's not here right now, but give her some thanks when you see her next. Um, the other thing that we are looking for for this directory is some photos of the life of the church. So if you have any photos of recent events or services or things like that, anything that uh, really reflects what we do here and who we are as a community, I encourage you to send those along my way and we'll uh, try to make it work to put them in the directory. Um, a few things coming up. Firstly, this week we have our Affirm Steering Group meeting on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. So Affirm members were here Thursday at 7 o'clock, so be sure to remember that. Uh, Friday, we are going to be starting choir practices. We're going to be doing them Friday afternoons at 1.30 for the time being. This is both for our Mother's Day service as well as for our charity concert that we're doing with Melville at the end of May. So if you'd like to be a part of this, uh, feel free to come out on Friday afternoons. Spread the word as well, particularly for those who might like to sing for this charity concert. Um, you don't need to be a member of here or Melville, any and all are welcome, so uh, spread the word on that. So again, that's Friday afternoon at 1.30. Uh, this Saturday, uh, Ralph, is the Manessa Tongue clean up this Saturday? 27. Yes, that's this Saturday. So if you are free this Saturday, I encourage you to head up to uh, Camp Manesaton and help with their annual spring cleanup there to get the camp ready for uh, kids this summer. Uh, I think it starts around 9 or 9.30 or so. Just head up there. They'll tell you what to do. Uh, it's a great way to support a uh, ministry that's very important to a lot of us and also get to know your neighbors, your neighboring congregation. There's a lot of folks from a lot of churches in the area who support Manessa Thomas. So again, that's this Saturday. At the back table there, with the green tablecloth, there's a few sheets of paper there. The first one is talking about uh, the next group study that's coming up. It will be on the Beatitudes. Uh, so this will be on Thursdays in May. You can either join in the morning at 10 o'clock or in the evening at 7 o'clock. Choose the time that works best for you. And it's online, so you can do it from the comfort of your own home. I encourage you to uh, sign up for those. Uh, again, the information is just on the poster back there. Reach out to me if you want any other information. Also back there, we have a poster about our United Church Huron Cluster meeting. So I mentioned this last week. Uh, one of the things that people miss about the old presbytery system was that we didn't really know what our neighboring churches were doing. We didn't know what kind of events they were doing, what was working for them, what wasn't working for them, or even just getting to know our neighbors in general. So what we're doing is we are bringing the congregations together, the United Churches throughout here in County, uh, just to chat with one another, just to get to know our neighbors, hear what's going on. So this will be on Tuesday, April the 30th at 7 o'clock at Clinton United Church. We're encouraging each church to send along their minister, as well as at least five lay people. Uh, so if you are at all interested about what's going on with our fellow churches, uh, if you have some ideas that you'd like to share or just are curious in general, uh, there is a little sign-up sign sheet at the back there, so take a look at that. The other sheet back there uh, has a, uh, is a, oh, that train just left the station. <laughs> Let's start it again. All right. May 12th, Mother's Day, Sunday. Uh, we are going to be doing a Mother's Day hymn sing service. So what uh, I'm looking for is suggestions for him. So there is a sheet back there. You can put, um, the name of the hymn that you'd like in the service, you can dedicate it to someone, either your mother or just a mothering figure in your life. Uh, and also, if you are willing to share just a little bit about why that hymn means so much to you or what it reminds you about that person. 
Um, so again, before you all leave today, just head to the back table there, take in the information as need be. Also coming up, we have our um, Messy Church happening on Wednesday, May the 8th. Uh, again, we had a great success with the last one, so we're looking forward to having this one as well. If you would like to volunteer or you just want to know more about what Messy Church is for uh, youth ministry, uh, just talk to Shirley and she'll be able to help you out there. Um, see, Chief just getting so distracted. I don't know what to do. I'll invite Beth up for an announcement. Um, and then after that, I'll ask if there's any other announcements. So. Good morning, everyone. I am um, the representative from this church, for those of you who don't know, to the Canadian Food Trades Bank. Um, and we are with the Bruce Field Community in, uh, United Church. And they have a Fields of Faith Growing Project. So last year we raised over $30,000 to send to the Canadian uh, Food Grains Bank. So sometimes the government does that times four. So when you do that, it's, it's quite a bit of money. So throughout the year we have some fundraising uh, uh, projects for, um, for people to come to and raise some money. So the one we have is on November the 4th, and it has been up on the announcements, so if you see that, this is what it's about. And it's Naomi Bristow, and it's a concert at the Bruce Field Church. Uh, she, they call her the Singing Cowgirl. She's a, a local a farm girl, and uh, she's a yodeler, and she sings all the old-time music, Dolly Parton and Patsy Cline, and, and she does gospel music. So she's quite popular. I know she was at Wingham um, a little while ago, and she's coming back again in June. So, so it's on Saturday, May the 4th, at 7 o'clock at uh, Bruce Field Community Church. And uh, I have tickets, so uh, they're $20 each. So uh, if you would like tickets, uh, just see me after or give me a call. Um, and we're, we'll be also planning a lunch after church for proceeds for that, uh, probably in the, around the end of October or somewhere around that. So that's kind of the two projects that our church is involved in, but uh, um, it's a very good cause. And when you watch the news with all the, the tragedies that are happening around the world, everybody needs help. So this is one way to do it. And on a lighter note, Every time I think of the Good Shepherd Sunday, I always think of this. When we were at Ethel United Church and Cam McMillan was the minister, and so it's a few years ago, and he had all the kids up at the front, and he told them the story about the Good Shepherd and what you need to do to your sheep. And, and or how to look after them and how to care for them and he went on and on in Cam's dry way if you remember what what it was like and when it was all over that the children got up to go downstairs and one of Bill Pearson's boys I won't mention his name because you never know <laughs> he went over to Cam and he looked up at me and he said that wasn't a bad story <laughs> All through the service, Cam giggled. Every time he would say something about the shepherd, he would always giggle. So every time we have the good shepherd Sunday, I always think of that. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. <laughs> Are there any other announcements or celebrations to be shared today? Mr. Douglas had a birthday. He said no, so it must be true. <laughs>
work of the local church, we also split the work of the wider church with our minute permission. And our minute permission for today is entitled Building and Strengthening Community Through Art. We would like to share a wonderful thank you letter we received from the Bissell Center, a mission and service partner located in Edmonton. We're sharing it with you with deep gratitude and thanks for your generosity. Thank you to the wonderful people of the United Church of Canada. It's with gifts like yours that we're able to meet people facing poverty and houselessness where they're at. We look forward to collecting and sharing more stories with you like this one about John. John is one of the community members at the Bissell Centre and has a passion and talent for art. In fact, he's been named Bissell's artist in residence. His work has been commissioned by Bissell to provide an authentic, community-made element to our event advertising, our impact reports, and several donor thank you gifts. His pieces often feature powerful imagery drawn from his indigenous heritage and always in a spirit of celebration. His art was the focal point of the event poster for Bissell's celebration of National Indigenous Peoples Day. Inspired by the love and support he has received, John wanted a way to give back. He designed, organized, and now facilitates a weekly art program called Good Art. In the workshops, he guides people to express themselves in a healthy way through art that means something to them. Folks are encouraged to share about the art they make at the end of each workshop as a way to build and strengthen the community. Your support provided the space for this to happen, and your gifts are having a palpable impact in the lives of Edmontonians facing poverty and homelessness. Thank you very much, United Church of Canada. Share with gratitude for your gifts through mission and service. Friends, we are called to lay down our lives for one another and to work towards the betterment of all the flock. That includes with our offering, which will now be received. <laughs> Shepherd, as you are a guide in our lives, we pray that you guide those who are in 
desperate situations around the world today. Those facing violence, those facing hunger, those facing difficult decisions and insecurities about the future. We pray that your ways of self-giving love be made known in all of the work on the global scale and in our local communities. May we see one another as fellow sheep in the flock and may all know comfort and care in your shepherding and grace. In all this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, earth and air and water are your creation, and every living thing belongs to you. On this earth someday, have mercy on us as climate change confronts us. Give us the will and the courage to simplify the way we live, to reduce the energy we use, to share the resources you bestow, and to bear the cost of change. Send us your spirit with wisdom in present controversies and visions for the future to which you call us. In all this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in a moment we gather up in prayer those who are on our hearts for particular reasons today, either spoken aloud or in silent prayer, knowing that all is heard by you, loving God. We continue our prayers in the words so lovingly taught by your risen Son, singing them together as found in Voices United number 960. <coughs>
time of worship, let's be good sheep. <laughs> May our loving shepherd send us forth into the world, fed, protected, and strengthened to set tables of justice and joy for all in the flock. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Let's join together in our closing response. Mm -hmm.